one day, in those early 1930s, you can read an inscription on the benches. Jews must not sit on these benches. You could say, it's unpleasant, it's not fair, it's not right. But after all, there are so many benches around. You can sit somewhere else. Of course you can. There was a swimming pool and over its door an inscription read, Jews are forbidden to enter. You could say, well, pleasant this is not, but there are so many places in Berlin where you can take a bath or swim, so many lakes, canals, it's nearly like Venice. At the same time, you can read somewhere else, Jews must not belong to German singing associations. So what? All right, they want to sing, they want to make music, let them just meet somewhere else, they will do their singing. All right. What comes up later is an order, really, more of an order than of an inscription. Non-Aryan children must not play with Aryan children, with the German children. All right, they'll play on their own. And then you read, we only sell bread and food to Jews after 5 p.m. Right, less choice, this makes your life harder. But after all, after 5 p.m. you can still do your shopping. And that's how it is done, step by step, slowly. And they become acquainted with that thought familiar with the idea that they are different people, that they are alien people, that they are the people that carry germs, that cause pandemics. And this now is a horror. What came later was something that developed immediately. Jews could not get jobs, they could not emigrate. And then, quickly, Jews would be sent to ghettos, to Kaunas, to Riga, to my ghetto. Auschwitz did not fall suddenly from the skies. It was pittering, pattering in all those tiny steps. It was approaching until what happened here behind me did happen. 